Hey guys, welcome to the 24th lecture of the DIP series. This is Anushri Kariski and today we're going to study about image segmentation. Now what is image segmentation? It is the stage of transition from image processing methods whose inputs and outputs are images to methods in which the inputs are images but the outputs are attributes extracted from those images. Now segmentation refers to the process of partitioning an image into multiple regions. So suppose if we have an image here and in this particular region it is high intensity okay which means that all the pixels in this region are of high intensity values okay so what does image segmentation do it identifies uh, it locates these abrupt changes in intensity values and it uh, identifies this as an object okay it detects this object similarly if we have another image here and in these particular regions okay uh, all of these uh, have similar intensity values which means that all pixel in this have similar inter intensities all pixels in this region have similar intensities so based on the similar intensity values it segments this image which means that it splits this image this entire image into different regions okay similarly if we have another image here okay and there is an object in this but the boundaries are not complete so image segmentation helps in boundary detection okay it checks for the intensity values all of these uh, uh, all of the intensity values and in this have similar values okay so based on that it does boundary detection okay line detection or edge detection so all of those who are applications of image segmentation so image segmentation is typically used to locate objects and boundaries in images Methods for finding discontinuity and similarity. Now, uh, there are different methods for finding the discontinuity in an image. And uh, those different methods are isolated point, line detection and edge detection. And for similarity, the methods are thresholding, region growing, region splitting and region merging. Okay, I'll explain this in detail. And uh, we'll also do some questions based on these. Now let's look at point detection which comes under discontinuity. Point detection is done by using sharpening filters. We use second order derivative using Laplacian. Okay, so we have studied this earlier. If you haven't watched the previous videos yet, then kindly do so before watching this one. Now a point has been detected at a location x, y on which the kernel is centered. If the absolute value of the response of the filter at that point exceeds a specified threshold, such points are labeled 1 and all others are labeled 0 in the output image, thus producing a binary image. Now you can see here we have the kernel for point detection and the function for point detection is g of x, y is equal to 1 if the absolute value of z of x comma y is greater than t and it is 0 otherwise. Now what does all of this mean? Suppose if we have our input image okay a 3 by 3 input image what will be our first step? We do padding of some sort okay so we will get our padded image we can use any sort of padding, zero padding, pixel replication, any sort of padding. And once we get the result from it, we'll use the mask. Okay, so this mask for point detection, we'll apply the same mask. Okay, we'll apply this mask on the image. And the result which we get from that suppose uh, the result is 3 5 2 9 
1.3872 okay suppose this is our result then what we'll do is we'll check each of these pixel values with the threshold value now the threshold value will be given in the question suppose uh, and that is known as t okay t is the threshold value we have to check if it is greater than t then the value would be 1 and it would be 0 otherwise suppose in this example t is equal to 8 so what will be the output of this first we check with 3 3 is less than 8 right so we put 0 5 is less than 8 0 2 is less than 8 less than 8 now 9 is greater than 8 so we'll put 1 here we put 0 8 is less than or equal to so here if we check it has to be greater than okay so here 8 is less than or equal to it comes in the otherwise category so 0 0 and 0 so in this way we have detected the point over here okay so this is how it is done for point detection next we have line detection we use second order derivatives here again which result in a stronger filter response and produce thinner lines than first order derivatives okay so uh, for thicker lines we use first order derivatives and for thinner lines which produce a stronger filter response we use second order derivatives okay the kernels here for horizontal lines for detection of horizontal lines is this one for vertical lines it is this and if it is any line uh, at a given angle plus 45 degrees okay then we use this okay that means if a horizontal line plus 45 degrees then we use this filter okay and for minus 45 degrees we use this filter so any given line detection of any given line plus 45 degrees then this and minus 45 degrees then this okay so just note down all of these filters okay they are really important and uh, they can be asked in the questions so the standard procedure is the same just that you have to apply all of these kernels on the images okay only the kernels will change next we have edge detection it is an approach used frequently for segmenting images based on abrupt local changes in intensity okay the different types of operators used here are first order derivatives such as robert cross privet and sobel operators are preferred for thicker lines and second order derivatives such as laplacian are used for detecting thinner lines so as mentioned already even for line detection okay thicker lines uh, if we have to detect then we use first order derivatives and for detection of thinner lines we use second order derivatives so that's why most of the time second order derivatives are uh, used uh, because they detect thinner lines okay but apart from these two for edge detection there's this third kind of kernels which are used and those are known as crisp compass kernels okay so these are used for finding the maximum edge strength in a few predetermined directions okay so these include additional directions and let's look at those kernels now now before moving ahead I had made a video on first order derivative filters which involved Robert Cross, Privet and Sobel operators. So if you haven't watched that video then kindly do so before watching this one so that it will be clear to you how these masks are applied. Okay. So now again we have the first order derivatives which, it, uh, which is Robert Cross gradient operators. Okay. So it is this and then Privet operators we have which are 3 by 3 matrices okay so kindly note these down then we have Sobel operators which have better noise suppression or smoothing characteristics okay so if these are your requirements then that is when we use Sobel operators okay so uh, that is why these are considered better than uh, Privet operators or Robert Cross because they have better noise suppression smoothing characteristics 
okay so these are the two filters here uh, which come under sobel operators and then we have privet mask for diagonal edges okay so for plus 45 degree angle we have this one and for mi minus 45 degrees we have this so again kindly note these down then for detection of diagonal edges we have sobel mask for diagonal edges which are uh, for plus 45 degree angle this is the mask and for minus 45 degree angle we have this mask okay so these are all our first order derivative filters then the second type of kernels which we have are crush compass kernels in this uh, if you have to detect across the north direction then this is the filter for northwest it is this for west south southeast east and northeast okay so just note down all of these filters okay they are very useful uh, for detection of edges across different directions okay lastly we have second order derivative kernels the laplacian and these are the two variants of the kernels okay the ways of applying these kernels are the same as before okay so you just have to take the input image and pad the image and then apply the kernels but you should be careful which kernels to use and uh, in what direction you have to do the edge detection okay so that's it for this lecture i will see you in the next one